A couple of announcements to start off. Let's see. Um, you might have noticed that homework six uh, was not yet posted. Apologize for that. Uh, I will post it tonight, and then I'll give you a couple extra days to take care of that. So I think I have the uh, due date slash time to be Sunday at one. Uh, that'll give you the extra, you know, day and a half to to deal with that. Um, it, I don't think it's going to be, you know, you won't probably need that extra time, but I just want to give it to you just just because. Um, it will be on convection, uh, convection correlations, so um, stuff we're talking about now. Uh, let's see, some exam one recap. So you now have that back, those who are here. Uh, there were a couple, I mean, overall, I'll just say, like, I think everybody did pretty well. Uh, there was a big range. Um, if, I, I, if you didn't do as well as you hoped, please come talk to me. Now is the time to figure out what went wrong and maybe what you don't understand in the class. and. Don't be embarrassed at all to deal to you know come talk to me about that. Yeah. Uh, what do we do if our score doesn't add up to the points that were deducted? Talk to me about it. Yeah. Okay. If there's some math problem, I mean, keep in mind there's uh, you know a lot of these are being graded and, and mistakes are made and sometimes things are being graded after beers have been had. So um, I would never do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, if there's a problem, talk to me. Uh, it's totally fine. Okay, so there's a couple uh, of really common issues on exam one that I wanted to just really quickly address. Uh, like I said, first of all, I think everybody did, you know, on average, I think did about as expected. Uh, normally, exams come in around that 80% that I write, so that I was pretty happy to see that there wasn't a complete disaster or it wasn't, you know, way off in what I was expecting. Um, the spread was bigger than I'm, I'm used to, so that was a bit different. Uh, there were seven perfect scores, so it was possible to do it. And I think, mo from what I heard, you had enough time. So it was mostly just a matter of um, kind of preparing uh, for, for the test. So the two areas that I thought um, were really consistently missed were on the fin problem. So I'll just kind of sketch it out. So you have this kind of fin that looks like this. And then on the, on the bottom, you have an adiabatic uh, surface. On the right, you have adiabatic surface, and I said that there is convection and T infinity, and then there's this generation that's occurring, uh, G dot, that's occurring inside the domain. So there were a lot of people who basically completely forgot about the convection part of it. So they went through and derived an expression in involving generation. Uh, they accounted for the fact that you had, you know, the heat transfer in the x direction appropriately but just didn't account for the fact that there's convection out of the surface. So if you didn't do that, you lost uh, a number of points. It's kind of a significant error. Um, otherwise, you know, if, if, if you don't deal with that, then the answer is basically completely wrong. So uh, you had to go through, identify the convection, get the area right, it's a differential area, and then go through the derivation and include it, basically. Um, any, any other questions on this, on this problem that you want to ask now? I know it's hard to ask in a lecture, but if, if you're unsure, so now that you have your exam, go back and compare what you did, your deduction to, um, to the solution, and hopefully they line up. Uh, and from that point, if you're still confused, talk to me, talk to your TA. We should be able to explain it. Uh, okay, the other thing that I think a lot of people missed was these, um, like this, T1, T2, blank, T3 is equal to something blank, right? A lot of people on node one um, failed to recognize that I'm telling you the temperature, right? I, we set at the boundary for node one in a numerical model. I'm, I'm telling you the temperature. So all you have to do is say one times T1 is equal to T whatever, TB, right? That was the equation. These are zero, zero. So a lot of people were going through on, on, for node one and putting, you know, solving for conduction and everything. Yes, there's conduction, but as far as the numerical model is concerned, we're specifying the value, so we don't need to go any further than that. All right. The conduction is handled in the other nodal energy balances. All right, questions on this part of it? Okay. So those are the two big ones that I saw. Uh, there's a million ways that uh, things were kind of, I say messed up, but. Uh, 
million different ways that people did it. Um, so you all want to compare it to, to the solution and sort of go from there. OK. Um, so let's see. The last three lectures, you should have had a chance to watch those on the uh, YouTube recordings. Hopefully those all made sense. Um, I think this lecture today is a little shorter, just one, because I had to hand back the exams, but two, uh, in case there were questions on the previous stuff. So um, going all the way back to the you know, two lectures ago, you're talking about uh, numerical solutions to transient problems, so make sure you understand that. If you have any questions, please ask. Uh, last time we talked about, or in the last video, we talked about uh, Convection. So we've now moved into this part of the, uh, the course where we're talking about uh, rate equations, uh, how we relate boundary layers to heat transfer and all that. So let's just kind of recap the last lecture because it may have been a little while. Um, so in the last lecture, we talked about convection with laminar flow. Um, in laminar flow, you have these uh, boundary layers that develop. We have two flavors of boundary layer. One is a momentum boundary layer, and that's where the velocity of the fluid is basically affected by the presence of some surface. And then you have a thermal boundary layer, and that's where the temperature of the fluid is affected by the presence of some uh, surface that's a different temperature than the fluid. Okay, so you have those two boundary layers. Those things will grow over, over space. So as they first form, right at the leading edge, they're going to grow. Uh, and the, the size of that boundary layer dictates the rate of heat transfer or the shear stress uh, that's propagated in the fluid. So you can see the little sketches that we have of the velocity profile. Um, this is from last time. So you have the, the velocity profile that changes and develops in space. And then you have, uh, likewise, a temperature profile that changes and develops in space, too. We relied a lot in this discussion on the transient uh, semi-infinite plane wall approximation. In other words, we're saying this model, the, the model of the, the way heat transfers in this convection problem is a lot like when you have a semi-infinite wall and you sort of introduce a boundary condition and let that conduction propagate through the wall. Um, the same models can be applied, and if you do that, you end up with this, say, a conceptual model of the boundary layer thickness, uh, which is delta M times the conceptual one is 2x, over square root of Reynolds. And then if you go back and actually solve the full analytical solution, um, which I don't remember if I said it in the video, but it's called, uh, let's see, it's called self-similar. So this, this is actually called the self-similar solution. Um, and it's called that because um, the profile actually appears implicitly in the solution as well. Uh, it's something you cover in the next heat transfer class you take. self similarly gives you this. So they're different only really by a factor of about two or two and a half. Okay, so you, you have this model for boundary layer thickness, um, for momentum, or for the thermal boundary layer. That thermal boundary layer is different only by the Prandtl number. Um, okay, so we can relate heat transfer coefficient. We, we can relate shear stress uh, with these models. Um, and then we also want to maybe represent these in non-dimensional form. So moving forward, when we're talking about heat transfer and, and correlations, uh, we need to represent them in this non-dimensional um, you know, sort of uh, parameter form. Uh, and in the case of the heat transfer coefficient, that's given as the Neusselt number. So the Neusselt number is just a non-dimensional heat transfer coefficient. Um, or the friction coefficient right here. This is our non-dimensional shear stress. Okay. So if it's been a while since you uh, watched the lectures, hopefully this gets you back on the, the same page. All this stuff is for local, uh, the, the ones I've written out here are for local conditions and flow over an external flat plate. So if your geometry is different, we need a different model. 